Once you have a probability table set up for a, a given situation, we can calculate what the expected value is. The expected value is essentially what you would expect to happen if you did whatever this um, event is over and over and over again. So in this case, if I played this uh, game millions of times, would I expect to win money? Would I expect to lose money? How much overall would I expect to get per game if I did lots and lots and lots of repetitions? This is the type of information that an expected value is giving you when you do this. All right, so how do we find an expected value? Expected value is essentially just a weighted distribution of our different uh, possibilities. In this case, if I, I have a one-sixth chance of losing $1. So I have my negative one, and I'm going to multiply that by the probability. So it's the value times the probability. But to find the expected value, I need to make sure that I take into account all of the possibility of events, including 100% of the probabilities altogether. So here I have losing $1, a one-sixth probability, or nothing happening, a two-sixth probability, or earning $1, a two-sixth probability of that happening, or earning $10, and there's a one-sixth probability of that happening. So each of my values of wins or losses are associated with their probability, and this gives us essentially what's a weighted average for this game. Now, all I need to do is just add and multiply all of these different pieces together. As um, I do recommend you going into Desmos for doing this because some of our um, values on this homework are gonna be big. And um, so it just helps to be able to have some of those large values or lots of things together in one. Um, in this case, if I uh, can kind of go through here, if I multiply negative one by one sixth, I get negative one sixth. 0 times 2 6 is 0, 1 times 2 6 is 2 6, and then 10 times 1 6 is going to be 10 6, and I can add all of those together, or again, just put that entire description uh, of multiplying and adding into your calculator. One way or another, in this case, we're going to end up with 1.83. as my expected value for playing this game. So even though there's a chance that I'm gonna lose a dollar, because I have chances to win a dollar and win $10, overall, if I were to play this game, you know, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of times, I would expect every game I would win an average of $1.83. That sounds like a pretty good game. And this is gonna be my expected value. Now let's go down here and check out our car insurance problem. Again, here we had a probability distribution event, um, table created. We had all of the different possibilities of events with their values and associated probabilities. To calculate the expected value, I'm going to find that weighted average. I'm going to take the value of my event, so $150,000 is going to happen 0 0.005 or 0.5% of the time, plus my $8,000 option for the small accidents, which happen 2% of the time, or 0 0.02, plus my chance of no accidents happening, which happens 97.5% of the time, or 0.975. So we're just multiplying the values times their probabilities. And remember that percentage probabilities do need to be converted into their decimal form before you do this calculation. All right, so if I take my $150,000 times that by 0 0.005, which is 0.5% plus $8,000 times my 2%, 0 0.02, .02, plus zero times 0.975, what I end up with in this case is $910. So if these are the occurrences in terms of what's happening over the course of a year, the expected value is that every automobile insurance purchaser is going to cost the company an average of $910. It's just that that 
that money, that $910 is being distributed in spurts, right? Uh, if you're in a big accident, you're going to get this big payout instead of the $910. If you're in no accident, um, you still have this $910 that's necessary for the company to be able to make the big payouts when they happen. And that's basically how that car insurance policy set works. So the company, in order to make sure that they have enough money to do their payouts, will have to charge each of their customers um, $910 to make sure they have enough to cover. Um, and so that would, $910 would break even. on their payouts. Now, chances are you're paying more than $910 a year for car insurance, and that's because the insurance company also has to keep itself running, right? So they need to be able to cover their own expenses um, for paying employees, for paying taxes, all of that good stuff, um, and hopefully for them also making a profit. But a minimum of $910 would be required to make sure that they had enough money to reach those big payouts as they happen. And they'd have to have enough customers to be able to um, have that sort of a clearance there. But that's all based on probabilities. And those types of decisions are based on calculating this expected value. 